shut the doors to the destruction of the world, the noise of this world. The Lord is my light and my salvation. It's such a joy. In the- we can never underestimate I- the impact of the love of God on every one of us. Let us pray. Father, I just want Whether to Whether we believe in Him so Revelation 3 and verse 10. He has kept us and protected us even when we were not thinking of Him. He wants your attention. The God. And when you respond to Him and think of how you have been saved from so many different circumstances, you will remember that you too want to sing love songs to Jesus. Good evening and God bless you from the UK. My name's Yvonne Kennedy and I'll be speaking to you today uh, just for a short while, just on the subject of are you taking a long, hard look? And I'll be coming uh, from this particular perspective from the book of Matthew, um, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. And let me just read that for you. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sick and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Sometimes we see people, but we don't really see their inner emotions. We don't really see how they are truly feeling. We don't see the complete spiritual situation. At times, we only see what we want to see. And that's for a plethora of reasons. Um, We haven't got time to engage with them at that time, um, or it doesn't seem the best moment to be having an in-depth conversation. So we're quite uh, uh, surface level in our conversation. And despite the reasons for this, quite often we lose an opportunity to help somebody along their way. Quite often they leave our presence still with the heaviness and the gloom that they were wearing inside. Sometimes We probably don't want to see someone else's situation because, in fact, we are far too consumed with our own lives. But as believers, and I speak to believers in the first uh, part of this word today, as believers, we are called to see beyond ourselves, beyond our immediate circumstances. If Christ himself had done so, if Christ had only been consumed with his own desires, he may have never left his throne in heaven to come to earth and to be the savior of the world because he would have lavished in his grand and high position in heaven, still uh, ruler as the Elohim, the Godhead, ruling over the earth. But thanks be to God that Christ saw the needs of humanity above and beyond him, his own self. This section of uh, scripture, the passage of scripture that I've just read, really summarizes what has taken place previously in that chapter. There have been several healings and even the raising of the dead. And Christ had been present amongst these people, um, also with the purpose of preparing his own disciples um, for the work that was ahead of them, although they probably didn't know it at the time. But he was preparing them as well 
for a second conversation that he was going to have with them about their responsibility and their work. So this is a transitional portion of scripture, just moving a bridge, as it were, from one situation, from the what happens as we know it now in chapter nine, uh, before he reveals a greater purpose, um, uh, makes clearer the purpose in chapter 10. In fact, in chapter 10, even though Jesus ends this particular um, conversation with his disciples saying, pray the Lord of the harvest sends workers. In fact, chapter 10, we see that he sends them. And so that's kind of what I'm alluding to really in the transition of Jesus speaking to them on the one hand of the great need that's in the, uh, the great need of the harvest to then sending them to do the work. We as believers need to recognize that we are not here to become just, um, just to lavish in the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ, to become wealthy as we bask in the greatness of God. And the wealth that I'm talking about is not money, but I'm talking about the blessings of being a believer. We are not just here to reap the blessings and be proud and pleased with what God is doing in our life at the cost of rejecting anyone else's circumstance. But we are primarily disciples to spread the gospel to others, to introduce Christ to them and to teach them of the love and the life of being a Christian. And so here we see Christ's work was so extensive when he looked on this crowd at this time, that he felt the need to engage the disciples in a conversation of what is needed to help this crowd that he was looking at. You see, uh, when we look at verse 35, this verse summarizes the heart of Jesus's ministry in Galilee. It really provides the rationale for a, a new phase of his ministry that was to come about where he would be, as I said before, in chapter 10, be introducing them now to the great labor, getting them to be involved in the work. Why? Because the harvest was truly plentiful. It was ready for harvest. And so we see that Jesus was letting them understand that this work was greater than one person's capability. Christ and, and uh, in his humanity uh, really could only be in any one place at any one time. In his true divinity, we understand that Christ is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He's right in your country as he is in the UK now as you listen to me. He's right in your city, in your town as he is in the town that I am in at this particular moment in time as I speak to you. But when he was on earth, he was only and could only be in one place at any one time. You see, around about the time that Jesus was speaking, there was 240 cities and villages right there in Galilee. Oh, he needed more physically than himself to be able to truly meet the needs of the people that were in Galilee alone. In verse 36, we see that until now, Matthew, um, who clearly um, was writing this, the tax collector, which was writing this account, Matthew presented the crowd as those Galileans, just as a group of people from Galilee who listened and observed and followed Jesus. And uh, they followed him with wonder, with awe. They were literally amazed at his greatness, amazed at the work that he was doing. They had respect and admiration for him. Bless God. Now, however, they had become the object, the focal point of Jesus's concern. Jesus looked on them and had compassion for them. 
He looked at the multitude, very similar to Ezekiel's description of God's compassion for Israel in uh, Ezekiel chapter 34. He looked with them with love in his heart, seeing their situation, having pity for their condition. And what was that? Well, I'm using um, uh, definitions by other scripture, uh, other uh, biblical writings right now um, and other versions of the Bible. When I say they were distressed, they were harassed, in other words. They were harassed by the life that they were being forced to live, their conditions that they were living in. They were tossed and turned in the, in the tumult of their lives. Here Jesus saw beyond the smiling faces that looked as he performed miracles, as he performed healings. He saw beyond that smile beyond the awe, beyond the wonder that beamed across their faces. And now he saw, as he always did, but now Matthew recognizes clearly that Jesus sees that they are distressed and that, that they are harassed. And so it pictures um, the Jews, um, uh, how they oppressed uh, who, how they were oppressed by their religious leaders. They were cast down um, because they were helpless. They were unable to deliver themselves. They lacked effective leadership. And that's where he describes them as sheep without a shepherd. And we see that terminology used in a number of places uh, in, in, the, in the scriptures. The Old Testament itself describes both God and the Messiah here as we see now as shepherds of their people. And so Jesus having that shepherd's heart, that caring heart in other pas passages, we see that Jesus would actually leave 99 safe sheep safely hedged in, tucked away and go and look for the missing one. That was the heart of this shepherd. He would go and look for the lost sheep. And here his heart is being manifest as we see in this scripture. Jesus, as he addresses his disciples, he uses a, an articultural example, one that he knew that they would understand. They understood very well the purpose of harvest, the timing of harvest, the work that needed to go into harvest, the fact that one cannot harvest uh, uh, an abundance of crop on their own. They needed others to help them. And Jesus viewed Israel as this field of, of stalk of grain, as it were, needing to be gathered for safekeeping in the bonds of the kingdom of God. They would die if they were left unattended. The nation would suffer ruin if workers did not bring them in soon. And those that know about uh, harvesting and, uh, and so forth, you understand that when the, cry, the crop is ready, they must be harvested. Otherwise, you will lose them. I'm sure in your mind, believers, you're already putting this word together as I speak to you. Unfortunately, in Jesus' uh, situation at this time, there were not enough um, workers to do this massive task. Consequently, Jesus commanded his disciples to beseech God, the Lord of the harvest, to provide additional laborers for the harvest. It is the will of Christ that every person be, every believer that is, be a missionary and a reaper. Some of us as laborers, because of how life uh, has treated us and brought us to now, sometimes we are unable to go ourselves. And so we can, we can really but pray 
for those that are going out and those prayers are so needed for the laborers that are out in the field doing what they can. And I'm not necessarily speaking about going to other countries and, and uh, ministering in other countries. Right where we are, we must be laborers for the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless God in whatever way that we can be. It is a requirement. We must work together in harmony for the purpose and the glory of God. And sometimes we think that we can just give money and that's enough. But when we can do more, money is not enough. So let's have a look. We must see things through Jesus' Jesus eyes. Notice he saw the multitude. He didn't just focus on his disciples, his inner circle, his friends, but he looked beyond them all and saw the need uh, of the multitude and the compassion and his compassion, his bowels of mercy, if you were to read um, uh, more traditional writings, the very core of him was moved when he saw them. What was he moved to? He was moved to love, mercy, and pity. This is what we must do when we look at the condition of the world today. Not that people want us to pity them, but we are moved in love. We are moved in mercy. We are moved to love. We are moved to mercy, to help to help those right now, even during the pandemic that we have experienced. And uh, they're saying we're coming out of it now. And uh, we're all immensely pleased around that. But it leaves its mark of mental health. It leaves its mark of financial distress. It leaves its mark of bereft citizens who have lost uh, their family and friends along this journey. We must, as believers, be moved to minister to these hearts, to help strengthen them, to give them a word of, a word of love and a word of hope, a word of comfort. We must be active. We must see the potential of the harvest. In fact, in John chapter 4 and verse 35, it says, do not say there is still four months and then comes the harvest. Beloved, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look the uh, at the fields for they are already white for harvest. You know, we don't have to even go out there and prepare people for Christ. Souls are already looking for a savior, looking for redemption. We must see beyond the masks that people wear, the masks that conceal their heartbroken emotions, but yet display one of elation, one of, of happiness, when really behind the masks, hearts are torn, hearts are broken, hearts are lost, hearts are encapsulated, are, are locked into various addictions that are controlling and manipulating their lives. We have the authority of Jesus Christ. We have the power of Jesus Christ to make a change. We must step into the harvest and make the change through the power of Jesus Christ, not of our might, but of the power of Jesus Christ. We must see things as Christ sees them. You know, in fact, when people, when we show and demonstrate the hope that is in Christ, other people get infected with and infused with that sense of hope. When you even look in that very same chapter of Matthew, Matthew chapter nine, you see there, there is a, a leader of the synagogues comes to Jesus Christ and tells him that his daughter has just died. In the middle of death, the father still saw hope and he came to the one who he knew delivers on hope, who brings out of death life. He came to Jesus Christ because he knew that Jesus Christ had a perspective 
that was greater and stronger than the very situation he was living in. And so he knew that Jesus Christ um, did not focus on the hopelessness of a situation, but on the hope that is in that situation. Jesus did not uh, pity and do nothing, but he was the one that would take out the sickle and reap and gather the harvest, gather those that needed and wanted to be gathered. He would go and he would gather the crop. Jesus did not just um, see them being in luck situations, but he brought liberation. He transformed their situation, made a difference in their circumstances. The lost Jesus saved, the sinners he converted to believers. Bless God. He saw the guilty and made them free. The unforgiven he forgave. We must, as believers, see this need. And to those that may not be believers, to you, I want to let you know today that there is a risen Savior who is all powerful, almighty. Remember, I said before, he is what we call in Christendom omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is right where you are right now. And he is willing and able to deliver you out of your uh, affliction, out of your sorrow, out of your distress. So if this message has impacted you in any way and you need prayer or further words of encouragement, and I speak to those situations of addiction, I speak to those situations of suicide, there is a savior. And as a servant of the Lord, I'm simply giving the harvest message. I'm simply letting you know that Jesus Christ lives and he is the savior of the world. He can redeem you. And I say that not simply as words, but I say it out of experience experiential knowledge, as we would say. I have experienced the love of Christ, the victory of Jesus Christ, the miracles and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And so from my heart to yours, from my blessed position that God has allowed me with, I say you too can be redeemed from your situation. So if you need further words of encouragement, or want us to pray with you and speak to you specifically, then do make contact with us on info at gxn.global. We are here. We are here to pray with you. And I just want to pray a prayer right now in the name of Jesus Christ for everyone that may feel locked or shut in, encased in, may feel imprisoned, may feel distressed, oppressed, depressed. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm just going to utter a quick prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come right now. I thank you, God, that you are able to transform human words and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Bring it to the hearts of those in need right now, God. I pray that anyone that hears this word, God, and you expound it in their hearts, God, whatever their circumstance you will present yourself in Jesus' name into their situation. Dispatch your angels, mighty God, to rescue them, oh God, to minister to them if no one else is around to minister to them at that time. Father, in the name of Jesus, break, we pray, addictions, open prison doors, release people to hear your word and to follow you and to accept your son, Jesus Christ, his great provision for us that you had made possible. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us as believers rise up let us not say we've got so much more time, but let us recognize the day and the time that we are living right now, God, and turn our hearts to the harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. 
May the God of all glory bless you. May his face shine upon you. May God give you peace right where you are in Jesus name. God bless you. God bless you. Shut the doors to the destruction of the world, the noise of this world. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Such a joy. In we can never underestimate the impact of the love of God on every one of us. Let us pray. Father, I just want Whether to we believe that. in Him, it's a revelation or not. three and verse ten. He has kept us and protected us, even when we were not thinking of Him. He wants your attention. The God. And when you respond to him and think of how you have been saved from so many different circumstances, you will remember that you too want to sing love songs to Jesus.